Beloved in the Seventh Day Adventist Church, beloved in the Seventh Day Adventist Church, this is a very urgent, urgent message. A very urgent, urgent message in relation to false education, new theology, Sunday Surge Part 3, and the emergent church movement with spiritual formation entering into the ministry and how true ministers in these ass days will have to stand up against these false theories. Will be overtaken by a lie and find in First Kings chapter thirteen. First Kings chapter thirteen, verse one to thirty-four. It reads, "And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense, and he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord, and said, O altar, altar! Thus saith the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name." And upon thee shall they offer the priests of the high places, and burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes shall that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand which he put forth against him dried up, so that he could not pull it again to him. The altar also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered, and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me, and my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again, and became a, as it was afore. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me, and refresh thyself, and I will give thee reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go on with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so it was charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that there that camest, that thou camest. So I went another way and removed not by the way he came to Bethel. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. The words which he had spoken unto the king, then them they told also to their father. And their father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went which came from Judah. And he said unto his son, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rolled thereon. And when the man of God had found him sitting under an oak, he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that came a thou from Judah and said, I am. And he said, I am. Then he said to him, come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I, I may not return with thee, nor go with thee. Neither will I eat bread and drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord that thou shalt not eat bread nor drink water there, nor turn again to get thee by the way that thou came. And he said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spoke unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, bring him back with thee into thine house and he may eat bread and drink water but he lied unto him but so he went back with him and did eat bread in this house and drank their water and it, afterward came to pass as they sat at the table and the word of the lord came unto the prophet that brought him back and he cried unto the man of god that came from judah saying thus saith the lord for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the lord and has not kept the commandment which the lord thy god commanded thee but came us back and has eaten bread um, and drunk water in this place, of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread, and drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers. And it came to pass, after he had eaten bread, and had, after he had drunk, and he sat on him the ass to, to it for the prophet, whom he had brought back when he was gone, a lion met him by the way, and slew him, and his carcass was cast away, and as stood by it, and the lion also stood by the carcass. And behold, men passed by and saw the carcass, Cast away and lying standing by the carcass, and they came and told him the city which the old prophet dwelt. When the prophet brought him back from the way 
heard the who said, It is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. Therefore the Lord hath delivered him unto the lion which the word of the Lord which he spake unto him. And he spake to the son, saying, Saddle me the ass. And they saddled it. And he went and found his carcass cast away, and the ass and lion standing in the carcass. And lion had not eaten the carcass, but had torn the ass. And the prophets took up the carcass of the man of God and laid it upon the ass and the city to mourn and bury him. And he laid his carcass in his own grave, and they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. Now, beloved, in the seventh day of his church, those young ministers like myself that are preaching on Sunday surge, wild music, dancing in the church, new theology, jewelry, uh, a flesh diet, a dairy diet, all these apostles in the Adventist church, those seven Adventist ministers that go back and compromise these apostasies and go back into our schools where they're teaching that we cannot, we cannot have victory over sin, that Jesus Christ is not in the most holy place, that we sent to Christ from back in the clouds, that once saved, always saved. Those new theologian ministers, those ministers who compromise these new theologian ministers are like that young prophet from Judah who went to preach against the, the um, altar that Jeroboam had set up. Now, Jeroboam had set up the lowest of the people. That means he set over the female priesthood. That's like a North American division. Dan Jackson setting over a female priesthood over the pastoral staff. They had a, a false altar, spiritual mason. That's like spiritual mason in our schools and our churches. The Merton Church Movement, which, is, which teaches contemplative prayer and all these false theories like witch doctoring with uh, Quasi and uh, Warlock teaching with Dr. Gregory Allen in Oakwood. All these false theories, beloved, is like a true prophet coming from Judah and these men saying to them, come home with me and eat bread with me and I'll give you reward, making him an ordained minister in that false new theology and apostate priest of North American division. All those false ministers are like saying to me, come home with me and eat bread with me or saying to others like myself, come home with us and eat bread with us and drink water in this place and we'll give you a reward. And we have to say to them, if you give me half of your house, I will not go home with you, nor eat bread, nor drink water in this place. That prophet, we must learn from the principles of the story. Because First Corinthians says that all these things written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come, for our comfort and consolation. We must learn from this experience not to go back home and drink water and eat, and, and, and eat bread in this place. Not to go back to these apostate Avenue schools or these public schools, but to go to schools like Heartland, UG Pines, Wildwood, Weimar. Um, and, and, and get true education, do self-supporting ministry and publishing ministry and start self-supporting ministries in these last days and try to reform the local Seventh-day Adventist church. We must not be a part of this, this wild Sunday surge movement, beloved brothers and sisters. It's a new way to deform God's people. So Josiah symbolizes Pastor Ted Wilson, the General Conference president, who's trying to reform the Avenue system against spiritual formation and women's ordination. You see what he did this past October? He tried to discipline these unions and divisions that are ordaining these females as pastors. But the brethren voted against him, and sadly enough, they may try to vote out, vote him out this coming 2020. But it, He's trying his best. He's doing the best to be like a Josiah in his ass days. And the true prophet symbolizes ministers like myself, call porters, who are going against this false theology, going against the woman's own nation, going against jury, going against Sunday surge, going against new theology that must not go home and eat bread and drink water in this place. Beware of the false ministers, the older prophets, beloved, and younger ministers. I, I, this is my admonition to you, not to go home and eat bread and drink water with them and be deceived by their lies. They're going to try to give you a false reward so you can be Deceived by the overwhelming surprise in these last days, the national sons of all, beloved. Do not be deceived. Contemplative prayer uses mental thoughts in which you focus on mental pictures of um, like the cross and what happened at Jesus Christ on the cross. And you block all thought out of your mind and you um, take a picture up to God, take a picture back down to God in your heart. And then your mind is overwhelmed with false theories, beloved. It is not right and just in these ass days. Forsake the abominations, beloved. Be true to God in these ass days, beloved. Do not be overtaken by the new theology in our, in our church, our ecumenical movement. They're signing the death of Protestantism this October. Protestantism was, it was over in the, in the apostate Protestant world. We as seven living as Christians need to stand for these ass days and continue the Reformation. We are the last church of the Reformation. They are already connected with Vatican II at the ecumenical worship in our churches. It's already a sign that the Adventist churches decided to go along with the death of Protestantism. Um, 
the logo in front of our church is upside down Bible and the flickering flame. It's all there is a sign that we're trying to go along with the death of Protestantism in our churches. Beloved, we do not need to do that in these ass days. We need to be stand firm under those first, second, and third angels' messages in these ass days, those three angels, and give a loud cry. God bless. Maranatha.